Hey everyone, today we're continuing to read in the book of First Kings together. We're at the tail end of chapter 16 and the very beginning of chapter 17 today. Now, where we pick up from yesterday is that Solomon, because of his disobedience, God has said that the reign of Israel is going to be taken away from the family line of David. Now, after Solomon's death, Jeroboam becomes king of Israel. And between Jeroboam and where we pick up today, there were five kings of Israel. Now, they reigned anywhere from years, many years, to seven days. Yes, that's right. Someone reigned for seven days before he was assassinated. Now, these kings were not perfect. They were far from it, in fact. Um, many of them, it, it says in the Bible that they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the story is no different with the king that we are reading about today. King Ahab, um, and so we're going to read about that today, King Ahab, um, starting in verse 29 of chapter 6. It says, Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years. But Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. Now we're going to skip to verse 32. It says, First Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. So it says that King Ahab is worse than any of the other kings. And that was pretty bad that came before him. He's going to forget it. He's wanting to forget about the Lord completely and instead worship the king or the the god Baal. Now enter in on the scene Elijah. Elijah was a prophet and during this time and and his role was to communicate messages from God to the people. So let's see the first thing that he says or he does. Um, 17 verse 1 says, Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe and Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. So Elijah says that by the power of the Lord, a drought is going to come over the entire land as a way to show that the Lord is far greater than this God Baal that you have set up to worship, that you have asked other people to worship as well. Um, the Lord tells Elijah to flee, to go to a place called Kareth Brook, because as you can imagine, King Ahab is furious at this message that Elijah has brought and wants to kill Elijah. But the Lord provided and protected Elijah during this time. We pick up in verse 5. It says, So Elijah did as the Lord told him and camped beside Kareth Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. So today, there are a couple things that I want to highlight as we reflect together. And the first thing is that the Lord is to be feared. Now, this is a big word, but what it really means is that the Lord should hold the highest place of honor in your life. He is greater than anything in heaven and on earth. He is mightier. He is greater. And so he should be respected. You should be in awe of who he is. And that's what to fear the Lord means. And the second thing that I think that we can reflect on together is that the Lord provides. Do you see how he provided for the prophet Elijah? Yes, he instructed Elijah to deliver this message to King Ahab that could end in danger for Elijah's life. But God provided he provided a place of safety for him, as well as provided for his physical sustenance each and every day. Every morning and evening, ravens came and delivered sustenance for him. And he was by a stream that gave him water as well. And as great and as mighty as he is, um, when you completely submit to him, you can 100% trust that he is going to provide for everything that you need and even more. He cares so deeply for you. Will you pray with me right now? 
awesome God. Help us to learn what it means to fear you. Draw our eyes to you as our great, mighty, and awesome God. Thank you for knowing us so deeply and for knowing what we need. You are Jehovah Jireh. You provide for every one of our needs. Help us to truly rest in this truth today. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. If these devotional videos are helpful to you, subscribe to our channel and click the notification button so you know when we post a new video. And of course, please share them with others.